Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So if you recall from part 7 on lipids, we talked about plasmologens as being glycerophospholipids with ether linkages. And that ether linkage is, is shown here in, in place, basically, of an ester linkage, which is normally there because of an acyl group, which is the case, actually, at carbon number 2 here. Um, but plasmologens have an ether linkage at carbon number 1 of the glycerol backbone. And they also have, they are also, another characteristic they have is they have the first two carbons of the R group attached at carbon number 1 those two carbons have a double bond between them. They have a desaturation there. Uh, in addition, otherwise, um, actually, the plasmologen is essentially a glycerophospholipid, where X is some alcohol that's attached there as part of the polar head group. Now, the question might be, OK, Plasmologens, they are glycerophospholipids, but they are slightly different because of these two reasons. The question is, how does each of these things get there? How does that ether linkage get there? How does that degree of unsaturation get there? How does that happen? So let's investigate it. First thing that happens is we're going to have dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which is basically going to be the glycerol backbone. We're going to take that and we're going to join it to uh, an acyl-CoA. And this acyl-CoA has these little asterisks next to it. And the reason why is because they're associated with this question up here. Is the identity of this acyl-CoA important in determining the identity of the end product plasmologen? That's something that we can't know right now. We have to go through, look at the pathway, and once we're done, come back and see whether or not this particular acyl-CoA was important or not. But until then, we'll, um, we'll just go through the pathway. All right, so DHAP's three carbons are going to be the glycerol backbone, essentially. So we take it, we join it with this acyl-CoA. And what happens is that the coenzyme A portion falls off, and we connect that acyl group to carbon number one of the dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which gives us one acyl dihydroxyacetone 3 phosphate. One acyl, because there's an acyl group with the one carbon, dihydroxyacetone uh, coming from DHAP, and the 3 phosphate, there's a phosphate on carbon number three. Now, aside from that, we have another acyl CoA, and uh, what we're going to do with this acyl CoA is we're going to turn it into an alcohol. So in order for that to happen, two things have to occur. First thing we have to do is get rid of the coenzyme A. Um, that's not the first thing that we have to do, but in the process, we have to consider that we're losing that coenzyme A. In addition, we're turning this carbonyl here into uh, an OH, an alcohol, a hydroxyl group. So that was a reduction reaction. And the reducing agent that's going to be used there is NADPH. So NADPH is oxidized to NADP+, while the carbonyl... The carbon here, specifically, the carbonyl carbon, is reduced uh, to having a hydroxyl group. And I labeled this other carbon over here as the alpha carbon, just so that can, it can help us track these carbons, um, so we can see exactly what's going on here. Now, question over here is why NADPH? Just because we're talking about biosynthesis, so reductive biosynthesis makes sense. OK, moving on. Next thing that happens is that we're going to take this one acyl dihydroxyacetone 3 phosphate and connect it with this alcohol. In fact, precisely what we're going to do is this, this acyl group here will be displaced by this alcohol portion. Okay. So what happens here is these, these two things come together. This acyl group comes off as a fatty acid, and we end up having that, that uh, chain there replace this this uh, acyl group. So now at carbon number one, we have that acyl group there, or excuse me, that alkyl group there, um, which actually changes the name of this molecule. And now we actually have this ether linkage. So we have this ether linkage here, whereas before we had right this portion here, which is the ester linkage. So the ester linkage is basically replaced with an ether linkage. That is accomplished by the enzyme one alkyl dihydroxyacetone three phosphate synthase named for the the product of the reaction. So once we have that, we have that alkyl group at carbon number one. Uh, what's going to happen is that we're going to convert this molecule to this this molecule over here, and the difference between these two 
this, this new molecule is one alkyl glycerol three phosphate. The difference between these two is basically at carbon number two, uh, carbon one and three, they're the same. Carbon two, there's an alcohol instead of a carbonyl, so that's a reduction. And the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is one alkyl dihydroxyacetone three phosphate reductase, named for the fact that it's acting on this one alkyl dihydroxyacetone three phosphate. That is a mouthful, goodness gracious. Okay. And the reducing agent here for this reductase is NADPH again. Okay, so that gives us this alcohol. So one alkyl glycerol three phosphate. Now from one alcohol glycerol three phosphate, we get one alkyl two acyl glycerol three phosphate. So the difference here is that we now have at carbon two an acyl group. So where's that acyl group coming from? It's it's coming from the reaction that is catalyzed by one alkyl glycerol three phosphate acyl transferase. And where is this enzyme getting the acyl group? Well, acyl transferases, we've seen them before in the previous videos. We get them from acyl CoAs. So we have an acyl CoA come in here, and a coenzyme A will fall off, giving us this molecule here. It's now one alkyl. There's an alkyl group at the one carbon. There's a, a two acyl or two acyl glycerol, two the two carbon has the acyl group there, and of course the three phosphate. So next up, we're going to take that and basically have some alcohol here. This X is some chain, some, some alkyl chain or some sort of chain of an alcohol whose hydroxyl group is right here. And this is going to be added such that it's uh, attached to the phosphate portion to give you the polar head group. And so that is head group attachment. Once we have this, we're nearly done. We nearly have our plasmologen. The only thing that we need still is to have the degree of unsaturation here between these first two carbons of the alkyl portion on carbon number one of the glycerol backbone. And so in order to give our final product, this plasmologen here, we have a mixed function oxidase, a mixed function oxidase act on this. And the mixed function oxidase requires NADH as well as molecular oxygen, which will be converted into water to give us this final product, this is our plasmologen. Now, what I want to do is go back to that question that we asked earlier about that acyl-CoA, this green one, this green acyl-CoA. Is the identity of this acyl-CoA important in determining the identity of the end product plasmologen? Well, this is a, the green one, right? What happened to it in our product? Is it in our product? No, it's not there. We lost it. We actually lost it in the step here when these two components came together and the alcohol displaced it. So that acyl group is gone as a fatty acid. So the identity of this plasmologen is dependent only on the brown, the brown acyl group, acyl-CoA that we came from, and the blue acyl-CoA that we came from, labeled R2 and R3. So this one was important in determining the overall structure and identity, and so was this acyl-CoA. But this guy was actually not important because it ended up just leaving right here. Anyway, I hope that video was helpful in trying to understand plasmologen synthesis. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.